Our courts are often overlooked and not fully understood, but they are important for all of us. The laws we live by must be enforced fairly so that all people may live in a free, safe, and just society. A 2022 survey from the Annenberg Public Policy Center showed less than half of all Americans, just 47%, can name all three branches of government, the legislative, executive, and judicial. Sadly, one in four people couldn't name any branches of government at all. Less than half of Americans knew that the Supreme Court has the final word on whether an act by a president is constitutional and only 55% knew that a 5-4 to four ruling by the Supreme Court is law and must be followed. This shows we have some work to do as citizens. In the United States, we believe in self-government. That means we, the people, rule ourselves and govern our own affairs. But if we are to govern ourselves well, we need basic knowledge to make the right decisions. The purpose of this three-part video series is to learn more about the judicial branch, which is a co-equal branch of government, meaning our courts are just as important as the president or Congress. When we talk about the judicial branch or the judiciary, we're talking about the judges who decide cases or legal disputes in trial or on appeal. Appeals take place when one party feels a court applied the law incorrectly and wants a higher court to review the decision. Importantly, the judicial branch also includes jurors, everyday citizens like you and me, who listen to the evidence, decide who is telling the truth, and apply the facts to the law. Jurors are entrusted with this power and given this responsibility in our country. The jury's role is absolutely vital in our system of government, making sure our justice system is connected to the people and the communities it serves. That's why jury service is so crucial. This series will cover important topics like the difference between common and statutory law, our civil and criminal courts, the appellate review process and the Supreme Court, as well as protections built into our judicial system. I know that sounds like a lot, but don't worry, we'll break it all down. Our goal is to make this information understandable and even entertaining, so you are empowered as a citizen. In our democracy, we elect representatives to consider and pass laws that we all agree to live by. Our courts interpret and apply laws in individual disputes. A court's ruling creates the rules that give stability to our system of ordered liberty. In episode one of this series, we learned Americans have some work to do when it comes to learning about our government and especially our courts. So let's get into it. Laws in the United States are made in two main ways. As you just heard, the first way involves elected representatives gathering to take testimony from citizens, debate ideas about the right policy, offer amendments, and ultimately pass laws. This can happen in your city council, your state legislature, or in Congress, which includes the House of Representatives and the Senate. When these elected representatives pass laws, they are known as statutes. No, not statues, statutes. That extra T makes a big difference. The other way laws are made in our country is through the common law, which comes from judicial decisions. These are rules that are developed through cases that come before the court building on prior rulings known as precedent. We'll talk more about precedent in episode three. So laws can be made by elected officials known as statutory law, and laws can be made by courts deciding cases known as common law. Let's turn now to the two main categories of law, criminal and civil. Criminal law, as you might've guessed, is focused on crimes. A crime is behavior that is punishable as a public offense. 
Crimes can cover everything from murder to shoplifting. Instead of individuals bringing a dispute before a court, with a crime, the government decides whether to bring charges against someone in court. Punishment may include imprisonment. The Bill of Rights, found in the first 10 amendments to the U.S. Constitution, provide important protections for those accused of a crime. In part, the Fourth Amendment protects people from unreasonable searches and seizures. The Fifth Amendment protects someone from incriminating themselves. Have you ever heard, you have the right to remain silent? That's where it comes from. The Sixth Amendment guarantees the right to a speedy trial. And the Eighth Amendment protects against excessive bail, fines, or cruel and unusual punishment. Civil law regulates non-criminal rights and duties, covering many disputes between people, such as family, contract, property, or injury-related claims. The Seventh Amendment to the U.S. Constitution is a really important protection because it guarantees a jury trial in civil cases involving more than $20. We created a whole series about the Seventh Amendment and why it is important, and we hope you'll check it out. The right to bring your dispute before a jury of your peers protects all of your other rights. It is how we ensure everyday individuals are protected and our laws are upheld. Our courts extend our laws to meet the needs of today while keeping us rooted in fundamental constitutional rights, creating the foundation for our democracy, economy, and society. Eighteen oh three was a very important year for our Constitution and the power of our courts. That was when the landmark case Marbury versus Madison was decided, establishing the principle of judicial review. This meant the Supreme Court could declare a law unconstitutional, strengthening the power of our federal courts in the process. The ability of our courts to rule on important matters is fundamental to our system of government. In episode two, we discussed the common law, which is constructed of judicial decisions. These prior decisions or holdings are known as precedent. They are the guides for courts when they address new disputes, helping them to apply the rules consistently. The Latin phrase stare decisis means to stand by things decided. Therefore, courts are to stand by their prior rulings unless there is special justification to overrule them. The doctrine of stare decisis gives predictability to our law. As we discussed in episode one, a party to a lawsuit known as a litigant may appeal their case if they believe a court got things wrong. In our judicial system, we have three levels of courts, trial courts, courts of appeals, and at the top of the pyramid is the Supreme Court. Your state will have its own Supreme Court. And then, of course, there is the United States Supreme Court, whose decisions affect the entire country. In the 1950s and 60s, the United States Supreme Court decided a number of crucial cases that enlarged protections and guaranteed rights for more Americans. Chief among these were Brown versus the Board of Education in 1954, which helped to desegregate our schools, and Loving versus Virginia in 1967, which legalized interracial marriage across our country. In 1985, fully 56% of Americans had a great deal or quite a lot of confidence in our Supreme Court, according to researchers at Gallup. However, by 2022, that number had dropped all the way to just 25%. Today, a large majority of young adults in particular hold unfavorable views of the Supreme Court. In September 2022, the Pew Research Center found 63% of adults ages 18 to 29 view the Supreme Court unfavorably. Lack of public trust can create a legitimacy crisis for the High Court, according to the Brennan Center for Justice. 
a bipartisan presidential commission on the Supreme Court of the United States was formed to consider the merits of reform proposals for the court. In December 2021, they issued their final report, examining reforms such as term limits for justices or changing the size of the court. They noted, quote, the justices of the U.S. Supreme Court are the only members of the federal judiciary who are not covered by a code of conduct, close quote. Judicial codes of conduct are important to ensure judges perform their work ethically, with independence, impartiality, and integrity. The protections built into our judicial system serve us well, whether it is trial judges reviewing jury findings or appellate justices reviewing trial judges' rulings. The judiciary is an integral part of our system of checks and balances, ensuring the executive and legislative branches conduct themselves in accordance with our Constitution. Through the years, our courts have been a beacon of liberty to the world, giving strength to our constitutional order and serving as the bedrock of our democracy. This three-part video series was made possible by the following sponsors and generous supporters like you. Please share it with your friends and join us at texaswatchfoundation.org to learn more.